ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the only soldier on parade who's ever in step, Craig Charles. This is it. The most important event in the robotic calendar so far. The second of our Robot Wars semi-finals. Yes, folks, in the next 45 minutes, anything can happen. As long as it involves robots bashing the rivets out of each other. Now, since the wars began 17 shows ago, machines everywhere have been having a go. One man was attacked by a vacuum cleaner, which nearly wiped the floor with him, apparently. Then another woman was nearly killed by an electric razor, which they say was a really close shave. And one bloke even got into a fight with his trouser press, but I've heard they've straightened things out. Here, though, another eight robots have been content to battle each other and have made it to the semi-finals. Served up on a plate, our semi-final eight. Stegosaurus from the dank mists of time, a dino bot strong and powerful. Hypnodisc, lethal, destructive, a robo-vore. He eats other machines alive. Gravedigger, some might say a clone of last series runners-up Cassius. Will it have that same knockout power? Blade, the captain nicked its weapon off his mother's lawnmower. She didn't know. She does now. Scutter's Revenge, a worthy heat finalist, but winning through when its opponent was disqualified for using that illegal blade. Beast of Bodmin, fearsome beasts from the Cornish Moors. That's just the team members. They won the first wars, they've never failed to reach the semi-finals. Do we need to watch them? Aye, aye, we do. Now, Evil Weevil's captain, Kevin Pritchard, was in the Panic Attack Championship winning team in the last series. The front spikes are tipped red to disguise spilt blood. And 101, the new machine of the RoboDoc team from the last wars. Cost a pound and a penny to build, they say. Good value, coppers well spent. Which robots will be spent forces here in the second semi-final? <laughs> As usual, tonight's contenders will enter a gruelling knockout competition. Except these robots are the fiercest of the fierce. Don't expect the Queensbury rules to rear their ugly heads here. And in the end, only two survivors can return for next week's grand final. Robot Wars the Armageddon. Craig, it's 101 first up with its spikes against Scudder's Revenge and the Bulldozer Blade. Grave Digger, a wedge with lifting arm against Stegosaurus and the Power. Beast of Bobbin, quickest in the arena here against the Whirling Blade. And Evil Weevil up against it with Hypno Disc. But enough talk. Let's get bashing. From North Hampshire, 101. The CO2 powered ramming spike will pierce one eighth inch steel plate. The tracks come from an old bottle washing machine. Screws sticking through the tracks will give more purchase and ruin our arena floor. Hi, I'm Mike. This is Paul and Amy. This is our robot 101. It'll run either way up on the tracks. It's got a very complicated weapon system that automatically fires when another robot comes in front. Bang. Well, it was hardly bang, smash, wallop in its heat, but 101 was too powerful for anyone else. Starting off with Overkill, who had begun brightly, petered out, and I'm afraid became fodder for the house robots. So that gave 101 an early victory in its heat. Next up, Centurion with its Legionnaire's axe, formidable looking. Its roaming ways across the arena, though, came to nothing. 101 chased it down. And then King Buxton. This was a rematch from the last wars, and a grudge match too, I can tell you. It was a war of attrition. Until King Buxton's motors burnt out, it went to the judges, and they came down firmly in favour of 101. Mike and Amy Franklin with her little mascot, a cuddly toy. Ah. Oh. <laughs> From Essex, Scutter's Revenge. Revenge against the robot world is the dark mission driven on by double two horsepower car starter motors from V6 engines. The front bulldozer blade is the weapon. 
We're the Scouters Revenge team. Uh, this is Graham, this is Remy and I'm Darren. Uh, this is our robot, Scouters Revenge. Uh, it's basically been built for sheer power and strength. Our main weapons are a flipping blade at the front that's just for either flipping robots or pushing them away. We've got running sort of 1.5 kilowatt motors. We've had it pull in a four ton truck. So we should be pretty all right for anyone who can come up against us. Zeus were first up against Scutter's Revenge, and the power of the push clearly seen here. Hardly a godlike performance from Zeus. Then rather hot under the collar, and ended up broiled in the pit Thermidor. In the heat final, Scutter's Revenge was actually beaten by Pussycat. But they were disqualified for using an illegal hardened steel blade. As it's a, a technical contravention, and for health and safety reasons, the judges have had to vote that you be disqualified because the saw shattered and it was against the rules. For you, it means that Scutter's Revenge now is the series semi-finalist. You told me Judgment Day was overdue. It was no, postponed. It's postponed. It's postponed. Yeah. It's postponed. Yeah. And it was postponed. Yeah. It's still in the game. So okay. Judgment Day has yet to come. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mess with Philippa laying down the law there for Darren Ball on the right-hand side with the controls. Roboteers, stand by. Against the 101 machine. Of Mike and Amy Franklin. This, the first Three, of the battles in two, this second semi-final. One, activate. It's 101 moving away from the early charge of Scottish events to come in and up and over almost that front bulldozer blade. Great strength from Scudder's Revenge. Don't forget, that's its main weapon, and 101 pushed into the CPZ, and very nearly under the hammer blow there of Shunt. 101, great traction and spinning, and embedded in those tracks are the screws, which don't do us any favours on the arena floor, I can tell you. Scudder's Revenge here looks mean and menacing. Well protected also by that aluminium body shell, but Mike Franklin, the controls of 101, trying to get in behind Scutter's Revenge. Perhaps the detects an Achilles heel there somewhere. And of course, we want to get his own pneumatic spike into play. Should come into play when it detects another robot near, but we haven't really seen that, to be honest. Well, this, again, developing into something of a war of attrition here. 101, 79 and a half kilos, slightly the heavier than the Scudder's Revenge boys and their machine. Scudder's Revenge, digging in. Extra traction from its aluminium mono chassis design tracks, but I'm not too sure whether there's any life in Scudder's Revenge to move forward. I'm, I think Scudder's Revenge here is in trouble. It's dug itself deep under the arena floor, yes, to get traction, but it can't move and shunt, as you can see, causing all sorts of damage now. I don't know about you, but I think Scudder's Revenge is finished here now. 101 slamming it on the side. It must be because the house robots have detected that Scudder's Revenge is finished, so they can come in now for the kill. There's Killer Lot and Matilda at the bottom of your picture. Now to bring in the big oh, chainsaw and Killer Lot said, no, 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 this baby's mine. I want Scutter's Revenge. Let me finish off Scutter's Revenge. Six. It's finished whatever way. 101 the winners with Mike and Amy. Well, just anything called a scutter not to clean up. They've been sent to room 101. 101 go through. Really good fight, and then we started to lose power near the end, and that was it basically. It's a good it fight, was a great fight. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. really it was. good. Yeah. Now, when is Judgment Day? Next year. Oh, next year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, Judgment Day is here now. Judgment Day is We've been judged. It's been postponed. It's been postponed again. Mum's been busy with the genetics, and son of Scutter will be here next year. Oh. OK, well, we'll look forward to that. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers. That was a fantastic battle. Now, I know you were really, really worried about that, I've, weren't I you, I thought Mike? I'd lost it. The first three quarters, I couldn't couldn't get into a good position, and uh, had something died in theirs, and we got lucky. Look at the state of it, though. I've got to fix it again now. Naked men for 101, but they're through. Gravedigger and Stegosaurus next up in the semi-final. 
from Norwich, Gravedigger. The heaviest in the heat, the steel shell is a coffin shape. The top speed of five miles an hour is a funereal pace. Took four months to build, but could be laid to rest very quickly at this level. I'm Dave, this is Jonathan, and this is Gravedigger. The robot has got an arm that worked off a two-ton hydraulic ram, enough pneumatic pressure. It runs on two one-horsepower electric motors, and it's going to shove the opposition right out the arena. As it did with Manic Mutant in its heat earlier on in the series. The lifting arm coming into play, and flicking Manic Mutant up and over. Next up, Mortis. Highly fancy. Very, very competent robot. Experienced team pushed into the pit. The Dark Destroyer had a whirling blade, but no future after the flip of the Grave Digger ended its dreams. Shunt finished it off.